There are a lot of people, and I want to give honor where it's due, but let me say this. There are a lot of people that would love to be in my shoes tonight because this is the way they make their money. I can't hear you. I didn't hang out since I've been here. I didn't go out with nobody. Because to stand on this sacred platform, you have to consecrate yourself. Some people just can do it. They can just get up here, call Jesus, and just do it. Been doing it so long, especially folk that ain't never had a nine to five job. But when I grew up in my father's house, you had to, you couldn't preach till you held a job. Can I get some friends tonight? I promise it won't be long. You had to have some friends. Jesus never chose a disciple that was unemployed. Preaching has become a hustle more than holy. It's become... Some people ain't never had no street cred till they got behind the podium. I called my presiding bishop at least 10 times as a skilled 40 years worth of preaching and asked him, what are your expectations? Because a lot of folk are preaching, but they're preaching for themselves and not for the assignment that they have been given to do. And he wouldn't answer me. Y'all know him. He just said, listen, I'm busy. Be yourself and get out early. I wanted a little more dialogue, so I called my friend Bishop Frank Anthon White, who I grew up with since I was a child. And I said, man, come rescue me and tell me what are the expectations. He then said, be yourself. But you know whatever bishop tell you, he mean it. So I called Bishop Brandon Porter. I figured somebody going to talk to me. I said, Bishop Porter, please tell me what to do. He said, preach, don't kill him because I got to preach Sunday and then get out the way. <laughs> we are all friends. But when we stand behind this desk, people's lives matter. Look at somebody and tell them your life matters. This I want to give honor first because where I grew up in New York and I served the late Bishop F.D. Washington, I drove for him, I ate in his house. A lot of things folk don't know. My daddy is from this church. I'm from King's Temple Church of God in Christ, 102 Laurel Avenue, Hempstead, Long Island, the late Dr. Joseph Arnold King, who was the pianist for Apostle C.H. Mason. So I grew up in this church. I'm not a prodigal son. I'm a productive son because I never disconnected from this church. But sometimes God will take you away to bring you back. Sometimes you have to go to come. And when I grew up, I never heard people clap so soft for leadership. So I was confused all week because when we say, let us thank God for our presiding bishop, y'all were clapping extremely soft. And when I grew up, we were taught the oil flows. Can I get help from the head down? My grandmama took me down south. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm from the projects, and my baloney had a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. My baloney had a second name. I'm going to be me. That's what he told me. It's M-E-Y-E-R, because Oscar Mayer had a way with B-O-L-O-G-N-A. I lived in apartment 6F, where we ate baloney and grilled cheese and canned milk with cereal. I know y'all not going to talk to me with that. And we walked to church two and a half miles. 
in the snow, sometimes we had to put on tube socks for gloves. And my grandma took me down south, Grandma Maggie Jones. She took me down south, and I wasn't used to it because she had chickens in the backyard. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. She had chicken in the backyard, and she said, Todd, I said, yes, go out there and catch one of them chickens. I said, Grandma, we go to the store. Do you have a grocery store? Because I am not catching what's actually trying to get away. Oh, no, you don't tell Grandma no. So Big Ma went out there and said, grab that one. I grabbed the first one I could get. And for some reason, she said, that's not the one. She knew what wasn't the one, even though all the chickens looked alike. I grabbed that chicken. She said, now grab it by the neck. I said, now, Grandma, this part, I just can't do. She grabbed the chicken by the neck, and she ringed the chicken and laid it down. Can I get somebody from the South to talk to me? Yeah, yeah, and laid it down on the floor, and Bishop Wooten, the chicken, started flapping his wings and dancing. But the movement of the chicken that looked excited was that he had been executed. Like some of you, you jump and shout when the music on, but who are you when the music stops? Who are we when there's no B flat go down to the four? Who are we? Chicken kept jumping, but it was dying. And the reason why it was dying for about 2,000 of you who would scream is excitement without being connected to the head equals death. It got real quiet. I see y'all doing the Kojic thing. I'm Kojic, but I went out there and hung with some Word of Faith boys and some Baptist boys and a few AME boys. And when you preach in the Baptist church, they'd be like, yes, sir, press your claim. <laughs> Preaching Kojic, they wait till your tonsils start falling out your throat. Then they stand up. The Lord showed me last night, a lot of people are dancing and looking excited, but not connected. If you are connected to the church of God in Christ via this man, when we give honor to him, you should stand to your feet. You should clap and scream because all the licenses and churches we all have came from leadership. We should never let other organizations see the largest Pentecostal black movement. You ain't clapping in the entire world being so passive, quiet, silent, and methodical. We are filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost and that with, I can't hear your mouth, a mighty burning Fire. Now that's how, I ain't gonna scream, but that's how I grew up, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, blood washed, and those that know the worth of prayer, pray my strength in the Lord. This chocolate bronda, this church is about to go to a whole nother level within two years. You're on a fast track for something you may have never seen before. There will be people leaving other organizations coming to this move because they have been delegated for the soon coming king. I want to stop because I have a lot to say. So when I say we thank God for him, I want this auditorium and the thousands and hundreds of thousands around the world know we do have the best leader in this day and time. Our chief apostle, our presiding president, Bishop J. Drew Sheer, get as loud as you can. Now you may be seated, and to our first and second vice bishops, Bishop Macklin and Bishop Wooten, I have preached for so many of you, and those I haven't preached for, I've had the opportunity to prophesy to. Um, it's been very unusual. It's about two or three of you I've never preached for. But I need to pause and thank God for just a few more people. And one is, of course, our saintly mother, 
mother, uh, mother, listen, I remember you in California, and I remember coming to Bishop Blake's, and I remember not knowing you, but the whole world knows you. Excuse my naivety, but I know you now. Mother Lewis, can we give her the same yell and hand clap? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To one of the greatest first ladies who is my friend, who I love dearly. Come on, the fragrance of this organization. Evangelist Karen Clark Shear. Three more people, then I'm moving. Now, when people yell, this is what I believe. Prayer is how earth talks to God. Prophecy is how God speaks back. That's what I believe. That's the way God uses me. Look at somebody and tell them your results will be determined by your response. Because when we were screaming, the man who you called, Walden, come here quickly. Run, run quick, man. Run quick. Because I'm on the clock for real. Run quick. I'm going to have Bishop shake your hand in a minute. There's going to be a transfer of about $3.5 million. This is what you will need to pay off debt and finish certain projects back where you live. The Lord also says build a school and prepare to give it to one of the women because you will never ever worry about money another day in your life. Now when he touches Bishop's hands, those that know that your response determines your results, Shabbat God with him. Touch his hands, I'm moving quick. And somebody ought to yell, that's the way we're moving. Now, you don't have to stand the screen. If you want to, you can. But if you're of age, you can stay seated. What your feet can do, your mouth can. Be seated. I believe that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall live by the fruit thereof, which means to me, for 2,000 of you who want a miracle, uh, your tongue either houses your funeral or your future. Your miss closed mouths don't get fed. Somebody's payment for college tuition is on the tip of your tongue and because your mouth is closed, See, see, I'm making you responsible for your neighbor tonight. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to get you where you need to be. It will be unusual because I cannot call people out, but I can call you up. So if God should use me to call your name and or to prophesy to you, you must scream from where you are. If you are silent, then you have forfeited your prophecy. Because response determines results. If a person is broken, God say you're going to have a million dollars in a year. Why are you so quiet? If you are sick, if you believe in him, as the scripture said, y'all come with me. Out of your belly yep, shall flow rivers. Michael, Michael Hester. Scream if you hear. Run if you hear. You over there? Come out here, scream real quick, because I got to move fast. We buying one, we get, getting one free. Michael Hester, how are you? Did you hear me say that if I said someone was going to make close to a million dollars in a year, that they should scream? Okay, we're going to give you a quarter of that, and the Lord said to be specific, you're going to get it, excuse me, are you, are you, you're going to get it through like a travel agency. What, what do you do? You drive box trucks? What's that? Moving freight. I see something that is so remarkable that has like a travel agency brand on it. It looks like A-D-E-L-M-A-N, Alderman. You need to write that down. You, you about, oh yeah, you already know. You are about to get a phone call. I don't know why you stopped doing that. If you'd have kept doing it, you'd have had a quarter of a million dollars by now. And somebody with a loud mouth scream for him and his blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Bishop, will you stand? I want to say something to you. 
I don't touch bishops. When I pray for Bishop Maynard, I didn't touch him. He came to hear me at Bishop Carl Pierce Church. He wanted a word, but I asked him, could I touch him? I'm not going to do that because of this presidium here. But I don't know what's going on with you, but the Lord said, tell him these words and tell him, hear them well and hold them close to his heart. There's a story in the Bible where Caleb was promised a mountain. He was promised a mountain. He comes back into the picture about 45 years later. He is 85 at the time, somewhere around there. And he says to God and the folk around, give me my mountain. And the problem was they thought, they thought that he was not ready for the mountain and they thought he aged out. So the Lord said, Caleb, speak. And Caleb said, I am as young today or as strengthened today as I was 40 years ago. God said within the next 95 days, he's sending a miracle in your direction that's going to change everything you ever wanted. And somebody with a loud mouth and happy hands. If a leader screams hallelujah, the people ought to scream hallelujah. You may be seated. I've got to thank people. I'm about to go to my scripture like Bishop Thuston for letting me practice my preaching skills at his church. And uh, said, let God have his way. I've got to thank God for my first revival ever preaching as a kid was under Bishop Stanley Powell when we were in our 20s. And I love people who saw me. I want to thank God that my life, my biggest embarrassment preaching a sermon was when I thought I preached. And a woman told me, come over here. What kind of mess was that? And, and, and I wound up going to school. And that was Dr. Juliet White, Bishop Anthon White's mama. Y'all ain't talking. She said, come here. I know they screaming, but you ain't saying nothing. You need embarrassment before elevation. Can you tell somebody embarrassment sometime is a good tool? So God's about to bless a lot of people. Something came and went. The Bell family. Bell Who's calling themselves JJ or CC? Who's Bell? Better hurry, because if you don't scream, I can't help you. I told you, you better run up here. I only need one of you. I don't want her to run. Well, as a matter of fact, you're going to come, come. Uh, something about Illinois. Are those your people? Okay, but there's something about Illinois. And God said, you have done well on the property where you are and what you've done. But God said, tell him I'm about to make a church calling with a new building. And God says, tell you, you're not going to have to worry about the money. You're not going to have to worry about anything. And when you get to your seat, I need you to scream with your wife because God is sending a healing to a woman for her name, Patterson. I don't know who Patterson is, but somebody, Patterson, who lives in Chicago. That's her mother. Okay, she lives in Chicago. God's going to give her long life. Y'all scream for the Bell family. We're moving forward. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to get in trouble. Get your Bibles. Uh. If I can get possibly 3,000 people that are crazy enough to believe that you can get a miracle by this weekend to just jump up and shout hallelujah as loud as you can. God on my My father, Aaron Hall, who's alive, who raised me, he used to drive for and hang with Bishop Owen Kelly when he was young. My father gave me one tidbit of information. He said, go there. He spoke like Bishop Frank White. He said, be who you are. He said, but remember these words. There will be many people there who don't like you that don't want to see you make it. Starve your critics and feed the committed. Look at somebody tell them, starve your critics. Don't feed your critics. So you that are praying for me, I'm going to guarantee you in the name of Jesus that about time the weekend comes, which begins tomorrow, 
God is going to do what your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard. And if I can just listen. Be seated because the Lord's still speaking and I'm trying to zoom through here. I want you to look at a neighbor and I'm going to ask you to say these two words to them. I'm not talking to the general board. I have no power over y'all at all. I'm just in the ring, right? But what I want to say to everyone behind, right, left, side, outside, lobby, vestibule, is when you say these two words to your neighbor, the only way they will respond loud is they have a little prophetic DNA in them. If they can see the future, these next two words should make them jump with you, clap with you for the next 25, 30 minutes. Just shout in their face and tell them you're next. that just spoke life into you but you're next your eyes have not seen go ahead and run let them run your ears have not heard neither has it entered into your hearts that man I want to say God is giving you two new vows stand Your death date is supposed to be in 21 days because of clogged valves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Melcha. Hallelujah. Come with me. Hallelujah. Close mouths. I told you your response will determine your results. When you lay down tonight, instead of the coffin and God is going to detach two valves that, even if they did it, they can't get to it. I'm not a doctor, but God said, I'm going to skillfully go in and remove those certain valves, and I'm going to reconnect them. Did the doctors tell you anything when you went? Were they talking about your heart? Well, I'm here to tell you that by 1.30 a.m., good God, oh my God, good God, oh my God, this is my heart. God is going to work wonders for you. You're getting a Hezekiah. You're getting a Star Trek. Live long and prosper. Look at somebody, scream this, then be seated and scream it with power. Tell him, live. Point at the bishop back here with all power and shout, live. The gospel of Jesus that Mark writes is in chapter 10. I'm almost going to be done. It's going to be Baptist now. Mark 10. Mark 10. After I've read this scripture, please be seated because we'll go to one more chapter. If you are over 65, please stay seated. If you dress real fly and it's hot, stay seated. Very familiar story. Thank you, Jesus. And they came to Jericho. Verse 46, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Oh, all I need is 10 talkers, I promise. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus! 
Somebody shout that name, Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many, and this is where the church has messed up for ten folk who are bold with me. The church's biggest problem is we've got a church within a church telling the loud church to be quiet. The disease in your church is not your preaching, it's your silence. Some people don't even scream till they get a mic. Then they want you to scream with them, but if you can't do it without one, you're not authentic. They charged him and told him, hold your peace. But he cried out the more, Bishop Hankinson, a great deal. Thou son of David. Why is he screaming? Because it said he cried out the more. If you're going to preach the text, make it live. You can't preach a quiet text that has an exclamation point attached to it. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And after he screamed like he screamed, I'm going to see if Tempo catch it. Jesus stood still. You may be seated. Yeah, be careful. After he hit the right pitch, raised the right sound, Jesus stood still. Go back to being your crazy self. Touch your neighbor and tell him, go back to being your crazy self. Tell him, go back to being your sanctified self. Go back to being that hand clapping, foot stomping, tongue talking. Come, come, come talk to me. But this story, Dr. Chris Harris, is also written in Matthew's gospel. You can be seated, chapter 20. Verse 29, and please, 50 of you that talk to me, you'll get a miracle by midnight. That's my promise. I know we got tens of thousands, but you that need a miracle, like before you get to your room, stay with your boy, just a little while. As they departed from Jericho, Bishop White, you told me, be me, that's it now. A great multitude followed him. Behold, we need to see what's wrong because Matthew said there was one. I mean, Mark said there was one guy, but Matthew says there were two blind men sitting. By the wayside, they heard Jesus pass by. They cried out saying, so singular became plural. Let me say this for 30 of my wealthy worshipers. If your behavior can make someone else act like you, God said, I'll throw in another miracle on the side, right? We, you've got to duplicate yourself. You can't follow me as a bishop and be quiet and pristine. We act like that in a business meeting. We act like that when we go to high class restaurants. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And when you get there, there are rules for entering. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. Talk to me. In my heart, I will enter his courts with praise. And then it says, make a joyful noise. There's not supposed to be any quiet churches. The church is the voice of God on the earth. Let the redeemer of the Lord, what? If you've been redeemed, say so. I grew up in sanctified church. I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood. I'm almost there of the Lamb. They saw him, the multitude, rebuke this, these, these two people because a new thing crept in and they said, when Jesus is present, hold your peace. The Lord is moving. Shh. No. Shh. First of all, in the text, he was never intending on blessing any of these guys. He was departing. What made him stay was their sound. Now, when I grew up in church, Koji Church had a sound. Oh, y'all ain't, now we got a dress code. But when I grew up 
at any silent moment, somebody be like, thank you, thank you. We, we, we filled in the blanks, not with a song, but with a sound, y'all. Where's, where's your... If the machando, I do speak in tongues too, a little bit. In the old church, if church was not going right, they had a moaner's bit. We don't have that no more either. The moaner's bench. And the mothers, when I grew up, they were older and they actually looked sleep. See, I can't get y'all to encourage me. They looked sleep in the front row, wearing all white. Y'all don't remember all that. They were, they were. But as soon as a spirit that we didn't see crept in, them sleep mothers woke up like, Loose here. And they will say something like this for my thousand people. He's in the room. I, I've not heard these terms in a long time. The blood. I, I just have not heard these terms. Loose your hole. Y'all I just have not heard these terms anymore. Maybe that's why we got abundance of preachers dying from diabetes, strokes, hypertension. Because we cleared the church out of its sound. I'm halfway there. They said, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Jesus stood still. Same day, same story, same street, same block. But I'm confused. Was it one or was it two? And he said, what can I do to you? They said, until the Lord open our eyes, that please, that we may see. Jesus had compassion on them touch their eyes and immediately their eyes receive sight and they follow him. Now let me talk to a theologian up here that I feel a little tension from. I will never say who it is because I'm respectable, but let me tell you this. I know you're saying that this is a kiddie sermon. We done heard this a thousand times, but sometimes you got to visit the past to even qualify to go to the future. And this is what I want to say to a bishop up here who will support me for the next fleeting 20 minutes. And that is this. It can't be the same boys because in Mark's gospel, Jesus never touched a man. He said, your faith made you whole. Oh, y'all ain't. And he immediately received sight and turned around. Y'all ain't. He didn't get a touch. But in Matthew's gospel, both needed to be touched. Some of y'all don't know. We got two churches in here. Some that can't praise till they get touched. And some that praise simply because they love who Jesus is. I don't need a check in the mail. I don't need God to buy me a new car. All I need to do is go back to old school church. I want to thank God for waking me up this morning, clothing me in my right mind, the activities of my limbs, the blood flowing warm in my veins. You still ain't screaming. Then he saved me, sanctified me, baptized me, filled me with the precious Holy Ghost, and that with a might. And every time the old preachers I grew up with preach, they were not as eloquent as we are. They didn't go to school. Some of them could barely read, so they had a woman who could read. Read. Stop right there. Don't go ahead of me. And they would have you read the book while they allowed the spirit to help them navigate. But here is what you better remember. And after this, we're going to one more level. Then I want to holler. But 30 of you catch this and scream for yourself. When they were preaching, they were actually not preaching. They were preach praising. Now, you don't understand that, right? It's a term called preach praising. And you're looking at me. What do you mean? If you catch this and you praise God, may all of your children be delivered from addictions. And that's this. Preach praising looks like this. I want you to turn with me. You know, I used to be one of those. To Matthew 20, verse 29. And as they departed, glory be to God. From Jericho, yes, Lord. A great multitude. Thank you. They, 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 they will put a praise within the text, y'all. The scriptures don't work by themselves. You've got to have a responsibility to what you're reading. When you read things, Dr. Miles, like, yea, though I walk through the valley, you can't be passive because some of us are in that valley right now. Let me see if you scream on this, but you're in the valley because the valley is preparing you for the table. Yeah, right? 
But what you gotta do is you gotta praise him in the valley to get a seat at the table. Be seated. My second level and then I'm going here. You've got to be responsible for your own results. What is the role, which I had some talks in the choir, but what is the role that we play to, re to get our own miracles? Because some people up here are still examining. If God wants you to have a miracle, young man, you'll get a miracle. Number one, I'm younger than you, but I'm not young anymore. My youngest son, my, my son is 40, right? So I feel like my parents did when they were calling themselves old and my daddy was only 50. Uh, he, he said, my son Todd coming to sing for me the sermonic solo. Here is what's crazy. You want a miracle without movement. Y'all want miracles without mouths. Let me give an example and to the first 1,000 that catch it and stand and scream because you made a move, you will see the results. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to crawl. The miracle didn't go to her. She went to it. The man blind, the man born blind had to go to the pool of Siloam. Ain't nobody bathed him. He had to wash his eyes. See, some of y'all feel like you kingdom entitled. Hold on, let's see if you scream loud on this. Name in the left, I had to dip. Y'all ain't, and he didn't dip just one time. He dipped. And at first his pride told him not to. And the reason why he thought he didn't want to use that way because he said we got clean of bodies of water. Why Jordan? Y'all ain't talking to me over there. Look somebody tell them don't stand up unless you're going to speak up. Yeah, if you're not going to talk, then be seated. But if you rise up, bring your voice with you. But here goes the tool, right? I'm not talking to nobody in this circle. Here is the tool that absolutely blows my mind. He came to get a miracle, but he came dressing up his problem. And when he could not navigate and orchestrate his own miracle, put me in clean water. No, man, we are gonna take your situation to the dirtiest part of the river. We are not gonna let you infect other people. Y'all ain't talking. And some of y'all can't get a miracle because you're sitting there somebody clean but underneath they're dirty. And this is, this is, this is, this is important. You can tell because they're dressed well, but they won't speak to you. You scream, they roll their eyes. They're checking their phone while God is speaking. We got some dirty folk around here. The man at the pool of Bethesda had to take up his bed and obey instructions. He had to take up his bed and walk. It didn't say he felt nothing in his ankle bones like the man in Acts chapter 3. He didn't feel nothing go through him. He just began to obey instructions to do something that he hadn't been able to do in 38 years. I would like to prophesy to you that got loud mouths. You're about to do things that you don't have the qualification to do. Almost there. Number six, as uh, Prophet Sprewell was talking one day, I just used it because it's good that we show people that we listen and support their ministries. Those 5,000 men could have not eat until they sat down. Now the problem that I have with a lot of people who won't say amen and know you need a miracle. <laughs> Is it is obvious that when Jesus was teaching those 5,000 men that they were standing through the whole message. 
He made them sit after they had been standing. And they were standing, I'm going to see you scream, because their first meal was not the fish, it was the word of God. Now, how can you be full of the word and just sit? Sit. What happened to the old Sam? When I think of the goodness of Jesus, come on, talk to me, and all no music that he's done for me. Y'all finish it. My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Because I thank God for saving me. But now our sixth example, and then we'll go to the last level, is what? Did Bartimaeus do to get his? See, when your legs get tired, hands get tired, your eyes are heavy. I'm gonna see who catch it. God made sure that He put praise in a part of your body that never gets tired. His praise shall continually. Oh, He. Your tongue don't get tired. Y'all talk about each other in your sleep. The tongue don't get tired. Bishop Brandon Jacobs, our tongues. God said, he said, uh, 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 Psalms, Psalms, Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord. Talk to me, I got two examples later than I'm a holler. At all times, not sometimes, his praise. Y'all tell me how they looking behind me. I don't want to see. Shall continually. No, no, you miss be in my mouth. That's singular. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. That's singular. But oh, magnify. See, you've got to duplicate it. Y'all remember that Mona's bench? One mother on the end said, ho! The next mother said, hey, hey, hey! And they kept going down the bench. I'm prophesying, let's have a little fun, church. If everyone on the end can scream and the middle scream with you, that's the road God's about to bless. You got to sit. Hey, Bishop Gibson, I remember you too. There should be a chain reaction. When life's troubles come your way, hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, anyhow. All right. What was his choice to get a miracle? His voice. Let me say it again. What was his choice? His voice. Will you tell somebody what was his choice? His voice. Hold on now. Be seated for just two minutes. The next time y'all get up, we ain't sitting back down. Here go some orders, two stories. Then Bishop, you can touch me on my back and I'll back my thing up. Tonight is an evening where no one gets a miracle without demonstration or participation. You must put your time in. Come on, give me old school for payday. Y'all, I'm going to say three words to those who need a miracle by next week, especially you got in the mess you were in by coming here this week. God said, because you use money you could not afford to use by next week paid in full. Y'all, now you can pass that down or you can just act like you the richest person in the world. Because your posture will determine your possessions. I'm not broke far from it, but I always praise God like I'm broke. I dress like the common white man. Sometimes I put on the same shirt, but I wash it every night. And people be laughing because they wearing all of the clothes and things. I, I live in a neighborhood where ain't no blacks in my whole subdivision but me. And they ask me, how did you get there? 
I didn't have the money. But the Lord said, go look for a house. I figured if it's your will, it's your bill. All right, y'all missed it. They, they're not talking. I was being respectful by trying to talk to my elders first. Two stories. I went to the place. They wanted a couple million. I didn't have it. I ain't gonna lie. And if I had it, they weren't getting that. They cut it down to about 1.5. I ain't going to say I didn't have it, but I didn't have it to spare. And I told the Lord, if you want me to have this house, your will. See, if you talk, your bill's being paid. You that are like, that's why you're struggling. That silence is an infection. It's worse than cancer. You can't even get married till you say I do. You can't even really go to jail unless they read you your rights. Yeah, some of you have the right to remain silent because anything you say and, and do will be and can be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. But some of you that know that you've been charged falsely, why are you so quiet and letting people represent you when you can represent yourself? Bishop, the v Vietnamese man said, we no gonna sell to you. And I said, okay, because I don't want the house anyway because I don't have that kind of money to be paying that type of mortgage in the white neighborhood that don't have a black face in it. The Lord said, I want you to have the house. I went back, never met his wife. His wife came downstairs and she looked at me. This is a true story. She said, the hall. I said Chinese food lady. <laughs> Have y'all noticed every Chinese food person you don't never know where they live? You don't see what they drive? She spoke her language to her husband. I don't know, I don't know what it was. And he finally spoke with clarity. My wife says that you've been eating at our restaurants for 22 years. I said, yeah, Jay Restaurant. They watching tonight. I said, yeah, Jay. I told him I was going to tell the story. Jay Restaurant. He said, uh, and she said that all of our children and servers love you and that every time you hold convocations and meetings, you book our whole restaurant. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I've never met you. He said, but in all actuality, this is my wife's house. I said, Chinese food lady. I ate so much shrimp fried rice, General Child's chicken, egg food young with thick gravy. Y'all in. She looked at me, she said, Dr. Hall, listen. I want to do you a favor. I said, what is that? And I'm going to see if you scream for you because the oil is dripping. She said, I'm going to give you 30 days to come up with this amount. It was way less than a million dollars, right? I said, oh yeah, Lord, now you're moving now. We done went from... Because when prices go up, prices come down. I'm just trying to help you. Every time you pray, something that was out of your reach starts coming closer to you. And every time you're silent, it just inflates. Chinese people are funny. Then I got one more story. Chinese people are funny. Uh, uh, brother, 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 chief, chief prelate. They, they, they act like they don't know English. So you be like, give me an order of shrimp fried rice. You want pork fried rice? No, shrimp. Oh, shrimpy, you shrimp fried rice. Onion, no onion. You know, they get real crazy here. But when you, when they write the bill and you give them the wrong amount, they speak real plain. They be like, no, that's 98, not 38. Bishop Thuston, I looked at him. 
And I said, Lord, I need you. I gave this to a few of my sons, but I'm led to use it tonight for 2,000 of you that will give God after I do it a five-second loud praise as loud as you can. Chinese people are funny, so I'm going to talk like they do, like he did when I bought his house. If you can catch what I'm saying in English, even though I'm going to say it like they say it, and you praise him, God says, by next week you'll see it. The Lord said, when I bless some of you loud mouths, I'm going to give it to you in one lump sum. I'm going to give this to you. My last analogy, be seated. Paul and Silas, say it slow so they know what you're talking. Say one lump sum. I don't need my money in portions. Some of us been through enough hell, we need it all at one time. Yeah, you that didn't say nothing, you ain't gonna get none at all anyway. But you that are praising, you're going to see the results. And you're going to be able to tell somebody it was my response. It wasn't his preaching. It wasn't him laying hands on me. It was the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart being acceptable in his sight. Paul and Silas locked up in jail. They get out at midnight. Look at somebody and tell them I may have mine by midnight. Now don't talk to the person that looks mean. Talk to somebody that's user friendly. Find your Matthew partner, two of y'all. And what I got from that story is what I want y'all to know is 12 midnight was not actually a design time for them to come out. I know we say that, but the Bible lets us know, Bishop Patrick Wooden, that they got out at that time. They could have got out an hour after they went in. They could have got out 30 minutes after they were put in. I'm going to see your screen, but they waited till midnight to praise him, right? Oh, y'all didn't read it? It said, and at midnight, they began to pray. See, they had their own get out of jail card free, but they were too busy nursing the pains and looking at the chains. Some of y'all today got to go blind to your circumstances and act like everything's already done and don't wait till you see proof of it because your eyes will see after your mouth will say. After God said, it appeared. You're doing it the wrong way. You're reserving a praise until you get what you see. When the praise determines what you see. So I preached this when I was 29 years old, somewhere in my 20s. And this is the truth, because we've had such great preaching and we'll have more great preaching. But please remember this. No matter how many of us think we can preach, and now I'm going to get in trouble for 30 seconds, please touch my back and have my back on this, because thank you. Uh-oh, yeah, I'm going to stay right here. And that's this, and I'm going to see if 10 of y'all scream loud. A preacher without a praise is dangerous. Now, I need y'all to know this. You're perfecting your art, but not your heart, right? Because whatever we're not going to do in heaven, you need to be doing better on earth. What do I mean? When we get to heaven, ain't none of us preaching. We get to heaven, won't be no need for laying hands. Y'all still not talking, you're standing. Won't be no need for give me a word from the Lord. But if you think you're getting to heaven without worship, oh, y'all quiet. You got another thing coming. Satan is not going to hell for weed. He's not going to hell for alcohol. He's not going to hell for fornication or adultery. He's not going to hell for the stuff that will send us to hell. 
This is for only 100 screamers. He's going to hell because heaven at one moment had no worship because he decided he wanted to exalt his throne. Oh, yeah. And it's bad that every time we get a preacher, we lose a praiser. Now, let me get out of here. We're licensing and ordaining people no longer to worship. So what got Peter and Silas, Paul and Silas in jail for the screamers on this side? Preaching got them in it, but only a praise could get them out. Oh, y'all heard me. And right now we done heard preaching. I received the word. But how do I get that word to go to work? And that is I got to put a praise on what I heard. And when he heard that Jesus was passing by. My last analogy, listen. My last analogy. I watch TV since COVID. I got some favorite shows now that I've been joined. I don't pray as long. Because COVID, let me remember that I had a house and that I have a name. So I, uh, I picked up on this show and I was watching a show called The Voice. Anybody ever heard of it? Wave at me and talk to me. The Voice, Bishop, you too busy to know about this. It has four big chairs like this. The objective of The Voice is that someone whose life can change forever for the better has to showcase their talent while the folk with the power turn their backs. Y'all slow now. They're not sanctioning folk because of how they look. How they dress. Yo, I can't. They're no longer choosing folk because they are in the lineage. Y'all ain't. They now have to turn their backs on a certain generation that feels entitled and let a generation that has what God has really called for step up to the podium. Y'all quiet now. They turn their backs and these people have a limited amount of time to sing. Y'all gonna miss it. We only have about nine more minutes and some of you ain't screamed since we've been up here. You already done lost your potential. Once they sing, they're singing, believing that the sound that these four people are hearing will make them turn the chair. If one chair turns around, that person has access to the next level. And right now, God may have his back turned. But when the church starts singing the song, the king that sits on his throne. Why? Why? Let me hear F sharp. Oh Lord, I'll be there. Why? Because God inhabits the praises of his people. You cannot be ignored when you have a certain sound reserved for God. I want you to just grab somebody's hand and tell them I love the Lord. No, no, you got to put some sauce on it. Don't say it like you're dead. Tell them I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And he pitied my every groan. Long as I live. He doesn't go through all the protocols. He just simply does one thing very loud. Look at somebody and tell them all you've got to do is do one thing real loud. What is the thing that he did loud? He called Jesus. All the church of God in Christ has to do is go back
him to be a friend. Yes, sir. I know too much about him. Yes. On him I katatala yes, On him I can depend. Yes, Save my soul. Yes, I know y'all may not believe me, but the Lord said I've dispatched angelic help in here. Yes, he said, and tell as many as would that if they would bring back the old sound of clapping and screaming my name loud, I'll bless them about time to get on. Say Jesus. I got a cause because obedience is wisdom but let me say this to 200 people who will be crazy enough when I tell you to I want you to put your mouth on it and your feet to the carpet for 30 seconds some of you that are used to this church stuff that wait until we stop then you want to showcase your fancy feet that's all flesh but all of you that know that by midnight, God's going to save your children, give you promotions on your job. You've got 30 seconds to pick them up and put them down right where you are. Don't care which ones, two first ladies, 
and about 400 of you in that lobby, in this auditorium, to dance like it's your last time. God said, I'll put speed on it and give it to you before midnight. You've got 30 seconds, whoever you are, get it and get it back. Get it, Bishop Hines. I used to try to dance like you when I was young. Hold the neighbor's hand, I'm gonna close. Hold the neighbor's hand. Ay, 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 Lord. Ay, ay. Look at somebody and tell them that dance was for me. But tell them, can I duplicate myself? Tell them if you dance with me without me asking, we both gonna get a miracle before midnight. Y'all got 10 seconds to bring in your other party? Y'all praise him back there. Praise him, Dr. Mixon. Praise him, Bishop Elect Rockmore. Praise him, Richard. Praise him, Father Hope. Praise him, Javon. Stop the track. Stop all the music. Don't come back in. I said, don't come back in. If they want to praise, they don't need you. Because when your feet stop, your mouth takes over. Hallelujah. I've got a feeling that every passion of my own gonna be kaya. I have a feeling that everything's gonna be all right. Hallelujah! Only hold the hand of somebody that's been using their mouth tonight. Don't grip. Don't touch out of friendship. Touch out of obedience. But when there's two or three gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing, God said, there I am. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting healed from tumors, diabetes, every sickness and disease known to man is under arrest in this place tonight. Because we are responding on the level of results. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My soul, my soul, my soul loves you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
You that are just looking around, you done missed it. But you that are giving God that Bartimaeus, God's about to exchange your mouth for sight. What you couldn't see, you will see. The way that you couldn't see, God's going to show you the way out. Because you play a responsible role in your miracle. Hold hands and look at Brother Hall. That's me, Brother Hall. Bishop, remember this and whenever time should allow you within the next month or two after you rest, call and tell me what you think about my closing story. Then I'm going to challenge over 3,000 people to do something. And I said 3,000 people, and it's going to be easy, and the devil is going to be a liar. Ya, 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 ya. <laughs> Hear me with clarity. I, I go to amusement parks, but I don't really ride roller coasters. I enjoy it. I ride the ones that I can handle. But I went to Sandusky. Look at me. Ohio, Cedar Point, where roller coasters are famous. And I walked through there, and a little young watch, little young white boy came to me and said, Mister, I said, yes, sir. You want to ride? I said, no. You scared? Y'all look, and because he insulted my maturity, I stayed on the line with the young white boy. And I was happy that the line was moving slow. Because I didn't want to be on it. We got through the line, then there were steps. We had to go up. We went up and then there was still another level of going through sections. See, some of you done went through and you done went up, but you still ain't there. The young boy was teaching me. Prophet Chad, he looked at me, he said, Mister, let people go ahead of you because we want to ride the front seat. Some of y'all better scream on this. You're about to get blessed because you let others go ahead. Hey there, Nelson. You let other people go ahead of you. Even people that didn't want to see you get ahead. You were courteous. Go ahead. We got in the front seat, Bishop Porter, Bishop Hill. We got in the front seat, and I'm closing. The white boys teach me. He said, now, mister, don't act scared. <laughs> and I wanted to hit the little boy. The attendant comes by and brings that little, I'm going to see what he's talking, brings that little bar down. And you can tell when folks scared because you'd be like, are you sure it's locked? Uh, I said, pull it one more notch. Then I held on and didn't even move yet. The young boy said, mister, you're making me look crazy. You too grown for this. Uh, he said, now here go the rules. How we act in the front determines how everybody behind you. Oh, yeah. And when y'all get back to your church, take the stiff folk out the front. You want to see that church grow? Take the... They're not ready for your next ride. They're not ready for your next level. Bishop Mack, when I held on, the boy said, trust me. Start breathing. He said, the ride gonna pull off slow and I'm done. He said, when we're going up, I need you to do three things. Let go. Scream. And trust the ride. I said, what? 
Let go of it. Take your hands off. Come on, y'all miss it. Scream on your way up. And trust the ride. Everybody behind you is going to act like you in a minute. Trust the ride. If 100 of you ever experienced this and scream, I promise you hundreds of thousands through, through God's heavenly blessings. But you got to be for real. Once I finished riding it, the way you know I was not scared, I ran back around. Oh, y'all ain't been to the park to ride the ride again. And the second ride, I found me a partner. You scared? Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all, you ever rode this ride before? Once God does it for you, you have to duplicate yourself. I wrote this on my notes. You ought to see it. I said, Bishop Sheard, I wrote it. Uh, Bishop Sheard, the presiding prelate, a man who let me preach at his church so many times, thinks ahead, years down the road, can preach, sure enough can dress, can do business, then I wrote one sentence for about a thousand folk who love him. It then said, but still will dance in his suit, speak in tongues, make time to talk to everybody. Y'all need to, we got to ride with that type of person. But there were a few we couldn't touch. Wouldn't talk. The Church of God in Christ is about to go for the best ride of their lives. And I want to say this to preachers, male and female, who will scream, and not one soul shall be lost. Not one. You're holding the hand of a debt free child of God. They didn't believe it because they didn't make a sound, but you're holding the hand. And I'm not going to lie, I'm debt free as of now. I've been debt free for about eight years. I hope God will give me 30 more. I didn't even know when I was debt free until my bank told me. And then I started sleeping longer. Started eating a little better, but a little cleaner so I could live. You're holding the hand of a person whose credit is about to go higher than it's ever been. I'm speaking it, but the results is based on you. I'm gonna speak one last prophecy, not to the board, not to bishops, but to the masses, you watching. And I'm gonna give you 10 seconds, no music, no dancing, just mouths. You can jot this down, you can write it. People are watching, they're gonna do sound bites, try to make us look crazy. But God said, tell you this, I'm gonna take who is Pharaoh and I'm gonna make him work for you. I'm gonna make him, said, I'm gonna visit him in his sleep. And God says, in the next year to two years, all of you that could never ever qualify for a house, you're about to possess your land. Cause God says, I'm creating a plan just for you. I need you, you, and whoever else you choose. Y'all need to talk cause somebody's about to call you in some kind of way. The Church of God in Christ is going to become a partner with another group that's going to make you own your own credit union for housing. They here? Okay, I don't know who it is, but they're going to do a deal, and this deal is going to be so sweet, it's going to be scary. And the last thing I'll say, so I don't get in trouble for those who will scream loud, and everybody two major people that was on the board that tried to not honor what y'all needed for Memphis, God said, I'll remove them and I'll place them with other people. I'm going to show you who I am. Watch. Watch out, 
what God has for me? You're holding the hand of a person whose children will never, ever beg for bread. Give them their music back, Sean. We're closing. Thank you for watching the Jonathan Desparty Gospel Channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and get your praise.